Okay, we're going to start with the minor pentatonic shapes here. And as I mentioned, we have five patterns that span the entire fretboard. And this is considered uh, by most people the first position or first uh, pentatonic uh, box pattern. So there's a couple of things to note here. Uh, this is the sixth string or E string. These are the names of the strings down to the smallest string or the first string. And also the red dots um, designate the tonal center. So in this case, we're starting on the fifth fret. So that is A. So we're starting here in A minor pentatonics. So this is the first position. You can see that there are three A notes here, here, and here um, designating um, the root or the tonal center uh, for this song or for the key and certainly for the patterns here. So as we move on to the second position, so you can pause the video at any time during these uh, shapes and, and memorize them or work on them as well, okay? So that is the first position. Moving into the second position, you'll notice a couple things. Let me back that up. So all the notes on the right side of this pattern will be establish the notes, as you'll see here, for the second position. These are all the same notes, so they're the, the uh, right notes on the first pattern and the left set of notes for the second pattern. So that's how all these shapes plug in. And you'll see that in every single shape. So the sort of the front end of the, the second pattern plugs into the back end of the first pattern, if you will. And again, I've highlighted where the A notes or the root is in this particular uh, position since we started on A and the fifth fret on the sixth string. And here you'll see the third position pentatonic. Once again, these notes plug in perfectly to the back side of the second position. So this is the third position pentatonic, and we move on to the fourth position. Likewise, you will see how they plug and fit together. So you should memorize these one at a time and learn each position individually, and then begin to see, and you will as you practice them, see how they plug in, and in fact, they're the same overlapping notes uh, position by position. And finally up here for the fifth position, um, again, plugs in all the same notes right here as the first position. So we could continue on down the fretboard. This is uh, the 12th fret here, and this is 15, obviously, and it continues on down. So this position actually goes, fits on down here um, at the further end of the neck, and it keeps going until you run out of the neck. So those are the five positions. Um, another thing that I did as now a lot of times people will show you all these notes and they'll be the same color. So now that they're all on the fretboard together in all these different colors, they don't really make a lot of sense. That's why I showed them to you one at a time and also how they plug in. But as I pulled them off into the white space here, I thought this was interesting so I left it in here. Is that <clears throat> again with no strings and no frets, I show you the first position and you get a nice visual uh, feel for the pattern, which is where you want to get to. You don't want to just learn the, the patterns, you want to actually visualize it. And as you visualize it, you'll be able to see it easier on the fretboard and use it accordingly. And also, with all these different colored notes, you can see the above pattern right here where this fits in in the context of all the other notes. Likewise, this is the second position gives you a nice visual of the layout of that position. Um, here is the third and again you can pause the video and study these or practice these uh, one at a time. There is the fourth position. Also in the right in the info section I've provided two links one to the pentatonic shape so if you want to uh, go to that link and print it out um, if you're not always in front of your computer you can print out the shapes and study them. But I think um, I would start on the video here first as, as this is sort of a unique way to present this material, but I provide a printed uh, copy for your convenience. And then finally the fifth position uh, pulled off into the white space here and you can see those relationships. So there's no way getting around just memorizing these shapes. 
Um, you have to memorize them one at a time. Once you've memorized five, uh, you know, you should play them to a metronome or put on an A minor backing track and practice them over a backing track so you begin to feel for where the notes are and where they, what notes sound good where. Uh, but, it, but as you begin to learn, once you've learned all five patterns and you have those memorized for one key, in this case A minor, you're able to move all of these shapes up and down the neck. It just depends on where this, this root is or what the key of the song is that you're playing in. And I'll show you an example of how they move here. So as you can see, um, this is now moved from the fifth fret, which was A, to the third fret, which is G. And all of the shapes just moved up the neck. Here you have two open strings, so it's the same shape. You would just play these two strings open. And so I'll go back to that. Here, uh, again, you have all the shapes and patterns on the fifth fret. This is for A minor. If we wanted to play it in G minor, all of those shapes just move um, up two frets in this case. But you can start this note anywhere on the fretboard, anywhere on the sixth string. And so now you know these five patterns, and they apply to all 12 keys um, on the fretboard. Okay? So now moving on to the modes. Um, similar to the pentatonics, there are five patterns. There's actually seven modes, but in two of the patterns you get two modes um, each. So <clears throat> just you, all you have to do is learn five patterns. Similar to the pentatonics as well, you'll see that um, they all plug in together to create kind of a continuous scale across the fretboard, and they're also movable. So you can start on any note. <clears throat> and move it up and down the fretboard and all the patterns remain uh, the same, their relative position just changes. So um, let me put on the first uh, scale here, which is, this is where you get two for one. So uh, we start here on Ionian actually, in this case that's the F, uh, eighth fret, so that is C major. So the modes, um, the way to think about them is they are not actually scales, um, but they play like scales, and you think about them like scales, but they are actually just different starting points within the major scale. So in this case, um, we're starting with C major. And I put this table up here to help you. Um, you can see the C major scale contains C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So no flats or no sharps, so that's the easiest one to learn. Um, and so there is one scale here, it's called the C major scale in Ionian, and then all these modes are just different versions of the C major scale, all the same notes, um, they just start on a different note in that scale, in this case D, E, F, G, and so on. Um, I've also labeled them by numbers here, so there's seven notes <clears throat> in the major scale, and therefore seven modes, um, and here's the names of those modes. What you'll also notice here, too, is that a capital Roman, a Roman numeral here indicates a, uh, a major uh, mode, and the uh, smaller case represents minor. So beyond the notes of the scale, just the first letter, I've also put the chords here. So C is major, and you see it capitalized. D is actually minor in the C major scale, and that's designated by a small letter here, and that is the Dorian mode. So each one of these modes have a different um, flavor to them, a different sound that you're trying to achieve. And three of them are minor, Dorian, Phrygian, and Aeolian, as you can see here. Three of them are major, one, four, and five, or in this case, C, F, G. And one of them is diminished, which isn't you know, really used that much, and that's Locrian. So back to the chart here. So once again, there's, there's no other way than to just brutally memorize these patterns, and it really won't take that long, maybe a couple days, and then uh, you can keep practicing the scales to a metronome or to a song, and you'll get better and better, and you'll begin to visualize it um, over the neck here, which is the goal. So this is the Ionian and Locrian. The difference here is Ionian starts on C, this note, so you would practice the C major scale starting here, going two octaves and ending here. If you, and I, I would start on the middle finger here. This is your first finger, 
And so if you just add this one note in both cases, you'll actually have the Locrian mode. So that's how you get uh, two for one in this case.